Good morning, dear distinguished professors, honorable guests, presenters, participants, and ladies and gentlemen. It is our great, great pleasure to welcome you to our online symposium, finding new directions for architectural education in the new normal, held by Indonesian Association of Architecture Schools, APTARI, in collaboration with Indonesian Institute of Architects, EAE, and Committee of Architecture Education, AC, AE of Arcasia. My name is Nanda, and I will be your host for today. Um, we will have an amaz amazing discussion panels on establishing architecture studio protocols, where we will be talking about what are the critical aspects of the new architecture design studio? What is the catch? And more importantly, how can we establish a new studio culture and pedagogy to sustain learning outcomes? These are a few issues that we expect to discuss with our peers from Asian perspective. But before we dive into the opening speech and panel discussions, I would like to share information concerning today's participations. The highest percentage of participants. The highest percentage of participants are design studio coordinators, while the second highest are the head of graduate program. And then participants affiliates with Aptari or EAE. We are glad to have participants from various provinces in Indonesia, architecture schools located in West Java, take, take the highest participations. While the second and the third are those from special capital region of Jakarta and is Java. On behalf of the organizing um, committee, I would like to take the opportunity to extend our warmest welcome to the chairman and deputy chairman of three institutes collaborating in this symposium. First is the chairman of Indonesian Association, Indonesian Association of Architect Association of School of Architecture, um, Professor Yandi Andriyatmo, PhD, and then Architect Ketut, Ketut I'm sorry, Architect Ketut Ranawiarka, Chairman of Indonesian Institute of Architects, and Mr. Ariko Andika Bida, General Secretary of Indonesian Institute of Architects, EAE. I'm so sorry. And architect uh, Ahmad Saifuddin Mutaki, representative member of ACAE from Indonesia. 
we would like to extend our welcome to architect Gyan Indra Singh Shekawat, chairman of Committee of Architecture Education, and his deputy, architect Adrianta Aziz. To start our symposium, I'm pleased to invite the chairman of Aptari, Professor Dr. Yandi Andriyatmo to deliver his speech and officially open our symposium. Professor Yandi, time is yours. Right. Hello. Uh... Hello, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody stay healthy and good morning to all the audience, uh, especially my friends, member of Aptari, Indonesian Association for Architectural Education, and member of IAE Indonesian Architects Institute. Also, welcome to the representative from ACIA member countries. Thank you for participating in this webinar. The idea to have this webinar was triggered by our concerns in the future of architectural education in the post pandemic of COVID-19. All the academics have been struggling to adapt the teaching and design studio in the last three months. We all face the challenge in the uncertainty of the situation. At the same time, we need to act quickly and prepare for the new normal that is happening now. We identify two main challenges and issues that need uh, our quick response. First, how to adapt our design studio learning process. We need to think how to ensure health and safety for all. We need to adapt to the new ways of studio learning, such as uh, blended learning, virtual interaction, etc. We need to think how to prepare supporting our facilities to face this COVID-19. And we also need to achieve the expected learning outcomes, which is very difficult. Next. The second challenge is on how to transform our curriculum to respond to the current situations. In particular, we need to think about to set the new priority in curriculum contents, to open possibilities for new discourses and new contexts, to utilize the new forms of information as big data or any available data in the internet, to prepare students for the new form of architectural practice. And so in responding to those challenges and issues, we will need to establish architect and design studio protocols in the new normal period. The main question to be discussed in this webinar in particular, what are the critical aspects to be considered? to establish the architecture design studio protocol in the new normal period. And the second question, how to establish design studio protocol to maintain the expected learning outcomes. Thank you to all the speakers who are willing to share their experience and thought to respond to these two main questions. For all the participants, I hope that this webinar will give some information and ideas to share further your institution to prepare better for the new normal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for remarkable speech. our event. We are coming to the main part of today's event, the panel sessions. Today's symposium will be arranged into a 
symposium will be arranged today's into, symposium will be arranged into two consecutive panels two consecutive panels consisting of three presenters each for this i would like to introduce our moderator professor dr paramita modiwiryo who will chair the session professor dr paramita atmodiwiryo is a faculty member of Department of Architecture, Universitas Indonesia. She obtained a PhD in architecture from the University of Sheffield. And she is also active in developing learning methods for architectural education to promote students' creativity and awareness of the relationships between users and space. She is awarded Future Art Green Leadership Award in 2019. Professor Mita, time is yours. Okay, thank you, uh, Ibu Nanda. Uh, so good morning to all the webinar audience. Um, I will moderate this session in English. Okay, so uh, first of all, I would like to hope that everybody is in the healthy condition wherever you are with all these uh, difficulties that we face in this situation. So the title of our webinar today is Finding New Direction for Architectural Education in the New Normal. This, this webinar becomes an opportunity for us all to share some ideas about what we should do in our architectural education in response to the current pandemic situation and the shifting to the new normal. This topic has become our main concern recently. We have discussed it in many opportunities. And we all face this uncertainty of the situation in the near future of the new normal. So today we will focus on the particular topic of establishing architecture design studio protocol in this webinar. Uh, we expect that uh, from the discussion here, all participants will get some useful insight in developing uh, what to do in the curriculum and the learning, learning method in each institution. There are two main questions that we would like to address here, as already mentioned by Professor Yandi at the beginning of uh, the session. The first is what are the critical aspects to be considered to establish the architecture design studio protocols in new normal period? And then the second one, how to establish design studio protocols to maintain the expected learning out outcome. So we really hope that although uh, we have to face all these difficulties of the situation, we really hope that uh, our learning outcome can still be maintained. So this is quite a challenge for all of us. So the discussion today will be divided into two panels consisting of the representative from five countries, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Indonesia, and India. They will share here their experiences and some lessons learned on the shifting of design studio teaching and learning. The first panel will mainly address some principles and aspects of architectural education in the new normal, especially on the shifting of the studio learning platform. And then the second panel will be more specific on the impact on the current situation, which we will discuss from various perspectives, such as how to make, make sure the protocol of health and safety can be organized in our institution, building resilience, and the impact on internship as part of the professional learning. I would like to uh, start the discussion of the first panel. So we have here uh, three speakers. And the first speaker will be a senior lecturer, Dr. Mohammed Zairul bin Mohammed Noor. Uh, I will briefly uh, read his uh, biography here. Uh, Dr. Dr. Mohammed Zairul is a senior lecturer at the Department of Architecture, University Putra Malaysia, Serdang. He graduated from Bachelor of Science in Architectural Studies with honors and Bachelor of Architecture with honors from the IIUM and Master of Science in Architectural Studies from the UPM and PhD in Management in the Built Environment from TU Delft. He has plenty of experiences related to the virtual learning and blended learning uh, since he's the MOOC coordinator for Malaysia, Secretariat for Blended Learning and, and, and MOOC, UNESCO Asia Pacific uh, Education Chapter and Certified Professional Trainer for Atlas T for Asia Pacific. His presentation today will be titled, What to Look Forward on Architecture Curriculum in the New Normal Period with Focus on Design Studio Subject. So Professor Mohamed Zairo, uh, the time is yours. All right. 
Shall I share my screen now? Yes. Okay. Okay, can you see the screen? Yes. Please begin. All right. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning. Uh, thank you so much uh, to the organizing committee, to uh, Aftari, and uh, uh, especially to, um, um, I think, uh, architect Ahmad Saifuddin Mutaki that uh, uh, personally invited invited me uh, in, to this session and also to architect Adrianta from uh, Education Chapter Malaysia, PAM. All right, uh, so I don't have much time. I was uh, given only 15 minutes, so hopefully I can manage. Uh, I think I have a lot of things to, to share uh, uh, today, but um, uh, if you want to get to know more, you can just uh, go to YouTube uh, to look further on this uh, I'm sharing with this new methodology on studio teaching, which I already practiced uh, for the past, I think, uh, I think two years. And then uh, since this COVID-19, it become uh, much more prevalent and then it become much more um, suitable to meet to the situation. <clears throat> um, and uh, I think uh, <coughs> it might be not, not that uh, too late to, um, to uh, greet uh, safe to everyone so that everyone will be in a safe and health uh, condition during this COVID-19. Okay, uh, so what to look forward uh, on architecture curriculum in the new normal period? So um, I will be focusing more towards the design studio subject uh, where uh, what I'm going to emphasize is more towards um, how we can uh, not change the entire uh, methodology of uh, studio teaching, but how we can innovate in our studio teaching education so that we can uh, keep abreast with the uh, progress with uh, whatever technology that already offered in, in the world so that we can still you know, catch up with all the technology. <clears throat> all right, as being uh, discussed just now, as being uh, introduced, um, I'm also a MOOC coordinator for Malaysia, Secretary for Blended Learning and MOOC, UNESCO Asia Pacific. So I'm um, also um, uh, actively promoting blended learning in, uh, in, in this Asia Pacific region. And uh, just last, uh, last two months, I was in uh, Telecom University promoting my methodology. And unfortunately, it's not for architecture school, but it's for uh, art, art school. But uh, since this is a studio teaching, so it works both um, for um, architecture and also studio related. <clears throat> okay, so what is uh, studio education? We know that um, studio, um, uh, studio is a place to uh, facilitate design learning and teacher and students weave together into a coherent conceptual framework, all right? So imagine the studio is like an environment uh, like a professional architect might work. So the studio master become like the boss of the, or like the, um, uh, the superior of the company. And then the student become the, uh, the staff or the workers. So uh, somehow we, we try to mimic the same, uh, uh, the same uh, scenario like, like in the professional office. <coughs> um, I would uh, say this is also um, a studio is also the, uh, we need to look into the new delivery modes and technologies that may help us to criticize the very own relation of master and student that we have kept nurturing over generation. So this uh, facilitating uh, the student, the, uh, how uh, the master, the, the, the teachers, the studio master become the facilitator uh, it's much, much more challenging in this COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic era. Okay, as educators, this has brought us uh, out of our comfort zone because we are so comfort, we are so used to teach as we are taught 
and now intellectually we we are challenged how we want to change okay the way we thought uh, for for this uh, uh, entire or for this uh, uh, the whole uh, education period so the new development modes and technology may help us to criticize the very own relation of master and student that we have kept nurturing over generation all right um, but still, our studios are essentially a box art. 19th century studio design studio with the addition of screens and to suggest more open and challenging relation. All right, so what are the challenges in the studio education during COVID-19? Uh, a bit of background study. Studio represent uh, significant departures from other pedagogy approaches. Studio is a casual place where meeting times are specified, but students gather and disperse haphazardly. This is based on Kosidovsky in 1996. So um, studio is a natural, natural uh, place where the student, you know, come in and come out uh, so that they can, uh, you know, discuss, they can bring in materials inside, they can uh, do models, they can uh, do a lot of things inside the studio. <clears throat> but the problem is that uh, we teach remains in the letter of I teach as I was taught attitude. So um, during this COVID, there's no way we can we can still teach the way that we taught before. So ironically, most design educators and learners place high value on innovation, creativity, and creative thinking, but ignoring the innovative teaching methodologies. All right, one of the biggest challenges in architecture education will be this disconnect from the resources dedicated to materials, fabrication, and physical implication of producing things into the world. So this is what happened during COVID-19. So therefore, studio remains a productive and place to gather ideas and work, but remains unknown on how it should respond to the buzz of technologies and COVID-19. All right. So, um, okay. Let me just uh, catch up with the time. Um, I'm, I'm just afraid I will uh, go beyond the time. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, uh, so this suggests the key to innovation is to do teaching and learning and how we want to innovate teaching and learning in the uh, in this uh, COVID era. Okay, <clears throat> uh, this is uh, some of the student feedback that we gathered during this COVID-19. Um, the survey was aimed to gather feedbacks from attached students in all universities and polytechnics in Malaysia during MCO. Uh, this survey started from 17th April until 30th of April. During the survey, we had gathered 202 responses including suggest suggestion on how to improve academically during the, this MCO period. So I just want to highlight that um, <clears throat> uh, these two uh, survey feedback. Okay, the first one is um, when we ask what do you think about the online classes, online presentation, online grid, I think the highest uh, response is inconvenient. All right, good. So the inconvenient essentially lead to the second, uh, second uh, graph. What are the problems you face during the online classes? Uh, it's about technical problem, Wi-Fi, DM device problem. So uh, we also still uh, experiencing um, some uh, disruption, especially when everyone's uh, using uh, internet. So there's a um, there's a disturbance in terms of the connection, and then uh, it uh, somehow disturbs the process of the learning. All right. So we're gonna highlight that. Therefore. Um, I came up, actually I came up with this uh, term, we call it pseudogogy. Pseudogogy is, uh, uh, is a combination of theory of pedagogy and also cybergogy. I will explain a bit about, about this. <clears throat> uh, Solar methodology, studio-oriented learning environment methodology is inspired by self-determination theory by Daisy and Ryan in 2008 and real model by Grebinger and Dunlap. And uh, all seat framework by Lee and Hanafin. You can read more. Um, if you Google the soul methodology, you can find uh, more uh, information about this uh, methodology, where its emphasis on the if, uh, aspect of engagement, support, scaffolding the student, and guidance and coordinate, coordinate them to create a more holistic studio experience. Actually, those components are already available in, in the studio, but we just emphasize and we make it much more structured so that. Uh, the studio coordinator will uh, have um, you know easier uh, easier way to coordinate the studio. So how we implement this soul methodology? 
So we try to uh, innovate teaching and uh, learning methodology uh, in the studio. And then we initiate safe regulated learners in the learning process. So if uh, anybody knows about heterogogy, so this is actually a friction of the heterogogy. And to promote critical thinking and thoughtful discussion to increase architectural graduate skills and collaboration and online competency towards IR 4.0 and industrial revolution, and to reduce teaching burden in the studio and promote independent and leadership skills. <clears throat> um, as I mentioned, um, this uh, methodology not only uh, uh, been implemented in Malaysia, we already um, uh, called to Telkom University last uh, two months, uh, but because of this COVID, we have to stop the monitoring uh, we have been tested in uh, arts uh, studio that involve uh, fashion, stu fashion studio, uh, fashion and textile, uh, arts uh, studio, but not architecture uh, yet uh, in, in Indonesia. All right, uh, so what are the original and evolving goals of Sintol methodology? Uh, there are three main components under the framework of uh, Soul methodology, the lecturing, assessment, and sharing. Okay. So under this uh, framework, um, we aspire to enhance the relationship between tutorial and sharing, assessment and input lecture, facilitate guidance during the observation and the expected outcome of the project. We know that um, during this COVID, we need to really use the technology. We cannot ignore the technology. We cannot use um, if we if. Uh, there's among us that really hate technology. We really hate how to <coughs> operate uh, this uh, online teaching. Okay, there's no choice. During this COVID-19, there's no choice. We have to uh, we have to implement and we have to um, um, to use it. Okay, for to 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 still teaching our uh, because the teaching business is still ongoing at at the moment. So therefore. What I combine here is uh, uh, pseudogogy is actually new uh, teaching and learning approach. And uh, the, the methodology is the sole module, okay, between, uh, it's actually combination between pedagogy and pedagogy. Pedagogy is actually um, peers, uh, among, among peers teaching and uh, education. So that the peers, which means that the students help each other and then um, uh, nurture each other learning and teaching. They decide about what they want to learn. And then we, as the lecturer, we become the facilitator. Cybergogy is that we involve technology, we involve uh, uh, IT inside this uh, teaching. Uh, although we already um, use it in, in our studio, for example, we use Revit, we use AutoCAD, we use uh, other software, but um, we will talk about uh, synchronous and asynchronous uh, later on. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> sorry, a bit uh, rush because of the 50 minutes. <clears throat> okay, as I mentioned, the first component uh, is the lecture. So now um, the lecture become the facilitator. All right. So you take in charge of the. Uh, yeah, sorry, you let the student to take charge of the of the of their own teaching and learning. Uh, so you become the facilitator. So the, the student will be given beforehand what they they gonna be. Uh, for example, if there's an online lecture, they will know what what type of lecture that they they will have. Okay, and then they will uh, change the lecture, the online lecture, the the lecture to become like a debate, a role play, or a, a forum, or any other uh, type of uh, delivery delivery rather than you giving the input lecture. All right. Um, this is online lecture that we use uh, during this COVID nineteen, and also previously, we already use uh, Zoom, uh, Webex, and also um, other type of uh, online teaching uh, online teaching uh, materials. Um, the good thing the good thing about the Zoom is that it support the sketches that so that the lecturer can you know uh, can comment the idea uh, from the screen. All right, three minutes left. Left. <laughs> All right. Uh, at the same time, we monitor the students' uh, progress in the Padlet. So whatever sketches that are uh, being done by the student will be monitoring in Padlet, so that the student cannot skip. Uh, because 
the idea, the, the process is very important in architecture. We cannot uh, ignore that. You cannot just expect students to come up with final product. They need to have a progress. So in the fact that we monitor everything. <clears throat> so the sharing is where the student will share the, the, the idea so that, um, you know, we have one-to-one -one tutorial with the student, but right now the student uh, tutor among themselves. So they share their, their, uh, their materials and then they bring uh, reading materials so that if, for example, in a group we have five, if one, should, uh, one student be, bring uh, three materials, they have 15 materials already. All right. And then the assessment is also very important where we use uh, Google Classroom. I think um, uh, most of you are aware of the Google Classroom. We can just uh, put, uh, ask them to um, upload their, their project and then we can evaluate the assessment. Okay, and this is also uh, the debate between synchronous and uh, asynchronous. So we are aware of this. There are some students that have uh, very uh, low internet access. So we allow for uh, asynchronous where the, uh, the um, lecture will be pre-recorded so that they can watch whenever they have time. And then they can watch uh, through WhatsApp because WhatsApp have a uh, use uh, low uh, lower um, connection compared to the other medium. All right, <clears throat> I'll just uh, run through. This. So this is, uh, we have a full assessment, how we want to assess our uh, student during this, uh, uh, during this COVID and uh, using this methodology. This is the rubric. And then at the end of the day, we, we want to, uh, as just mentioned just now, the learning outcome is very important. So despite this, uh, the marks that we already determined for the student, we want to nurture a future architect that uh, emphasize on the leadership and entrepreneurship in terms of participation, uh, because when they go, go out, the participation in the society is very important. The teamwork among the teammate, and then the ethics and the professional, how they deal uh, among, among the friends. So we will evaluate, we evaluate all of this and also the communication and the lifelong learning. All right. So these are the details of the rubric. Okay. And this is how we, uh, how we did before COVID. And this is how we, we uh, innovate during this uh, COVID. So everything online. Uh, as I mentioned already, this uh, sole methodology module already being uh, trained in the uh, um, in, uh, Philippines, uh, Indonesia, and also Brunei. So uh, if you anybody in any school interested to know about this, you can contact me and then we can, uh, we can uh, arrange uh, for the briefing and then uh, more explanation. Uh, and then this uh, sole framework also already got copyright from uh, Malaysia IPO. <clears throat> okay, we have package uh, training day first round and second uh, second final round. We 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 can teach also um, universities how to use this uh, methodology in their uh, studio teaching. All right. Um, last but not least, this I would is say um, this is uh, the first in the world video world about so methodology. Uh, just very comprehensive step by step, 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 step of step. how you want to run your studio. We have uh, uh, three main components, which is tutorial sharing, uh, the second one is the input lecture, and the third one is the assessment. Discussion we feel more comfortable, and uh, the environment will be less stress or more casual. The first part is the tutorial sharing. Uh, the sharing in the studio previously um, is between the the lecturers and the students. So the students become the uh, the one who just receive the information from the lecturers. Okay, it's, there's no vice versa. So in this two technique, we allow the student to actually uh, share between their peers. So how we do it is that uh, from the sharing session, for example, um, the student will told to uh, bring their own materials to the studio. Okay, for example, in, in a group of five or six. Uh, if one student um, brought maybe uh, three at least articles or three reading materials, 
Uh, now we already have 15 uh, materials to be discussed in the studio. So this discuss, uh, so the discussion in the studio become dynamic, and then a lot of uh, points to be discussed rather than just waiting for the lecture to be input. And the second uh, step is usually the tutorial and uh, sharing, uh, where uh, apart from the sharing among the students, uh, the students can also critics among uh, their peers before lecturers as a facilitator, which uh, will just wrap up the session. Yeah, we are creating each other. Uh, it is kind of like a reminder to ourselves on our own progress. And then the third element, which is the assessment. During the assessment, we allow the students to actually um, assess their peers. They would given the rubric, they were given the graduate that only focusing towards uh, the marks entirely for their uh, academic path. Okay. But they need to have like a teamwork spirit, they need to have a professional and ethics, they need to have communication and lifelong learning, they need to have this uh, leadership and entrepreneurship. Soul is no longer a module, it's going to be a methodology of uh, teaching in creative studios. We learn together and then we get the knowledge from each other. To come to Soul module, we try to um, complement with uh, several of the things, for example, we can come up with a uh, all right, so I think my time is up. Um, uh, for more information on the soul methodology, you can just uh, go to YouTube and then find uh, S O L E methodology and then uh, more information there. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the for the opportunity given. Okay, um, I give back to the chairman. Okay, thank you, Dr. Zairo for sharing about your soul methodology and yeah i think uh, it's quite an interesting framework in relating uh, lecturing sharing and assessment that uh, perhaps uh, we can move forward to uh, this current situation uh, for the participants the question and answer will be taken uh, or will be conducted after uh, the first panel after the third speaker so if you have any questions for Dr. Zairul, you can write your questions in the chat uh, space. Uh, just type your questions there and then we will select uh, some of the questions to be discussed later. We will move on to the second speaker uh, from Hong Kong. So uh, this second presentation will be delivered by Dr. Rufina Sharmila Tila Karatni. Uh, Dr. Rufina is the Associate Professor and Program Director at the Department of Architecture, Chu Hai College of Higher Education. She is an academic and an architect specialized in environmental sustainability with over 20 years international experience in academia and practice. In 2018, she has been awarded the RIBA Fellow title in recognition of her contribution to academia research and practice. As an educator, she has demonstrated her teaching performance through achieving Teaching Excellence Awards in 2019. Dr. Ravina is also an active researcher with various research funds from public and private sources. Her research focuses on urban thermal comfort, livability, and resilience of high-density cities. She is the finalist in Hong Kong Green Building Awards in the Research and Planning category and has won merit awards in several other design competitions. She is a regular speaker at international conferences on architectural science and sustainability. She has organized several conferences such as Modular Construction Conference, Climate Change Adaptation Conference, and Resilience and Robust Cities Conference. Prior to joining Academia, Dr. Rifina held, okay, held senior positions at large international architectural firms advocating and leading design teams to integrate environmental design and the corporates to establish sustainable operation. She extends her passion and expertise through her roles as a green building faculty at HKGBC and through her active engagement in Architectural Science Association Australia and New Zealand and RIBA Hong Kong Chapter Education Committee. 
So Dr. Rufina, today will share to us about the approaches to architecture design studio in the new normal period from Hong Kong perspective. Dr. Rufina, the time is yours. Well, thank you, Dr. Paramesh. Um, can you all hear me? Uh, let me see my screen. Okay. Uh, so let me, uh, can, I, can I operate it from my side? Is it okay? Uh, Dr. Paramita, can I operate it from my side? Because this, you have given me this screen from there. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Can right. you operate from your side? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. Let me share the mm, few options. Uh, no, there is, uh, because you have, you have shared the screen. Oh, That's okay. okay. That's okay. No, no problem. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Let me, let, me, yeah, oh. let me get my, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Uh, perfect. Uh, right. Uh, so, um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, very generous. Um, and thank you for the invitation uh, for us to uh, uh, share our uh, perspective in Hong Kong. I think when it comes to Hong Kong, uh, not only architectural education, uh, it affects our living and everything in Hong Kong, this high density situation. Uh, and when it when the pandemic came, it was a big concern about the density, and also uh, asking students to work from their homes, which are you will be alarmed the size, um, like fifteen square meters, some of the houses, and then the whole family lives in fifteen square meter. And imagine somebody having to uh, stay at home the whole time with the parents and with other siblings and. Uh, learn online with Zoom on all the day. So, um, and uh, what I'm going to show you is that how we have been running the studio and, uh, and other courses uh, because they are kind of integrated uh, in a normal year. And then what are the kind of shifts that we had to make uh, in order to adapt to this new normal period that is uh, called. Uh, so uh, let me show you. All right. So in a typical year, we have um, three projects. The first project um, is I'm, I'm running only the Master of Architecture Studio. So I'm going to actually share a lot of my experiences uh, about the Master of Architecture Studio. Um, so uh, for Master of Architecture Studio, we get students from different countries, uh, mostly from Australia and the UK. So uh, since they come from different schools, we actually do not know what their skill sets are. So the first project pretty much is to sort of like align their skills and for us to also gauge uh, what level of competencies and how we should navigate for the rest of the semester. Uh, so the first project is called Performing Skins. Um, and what we do is that uh, we take a existing building and uh, we give them a program inside the existing building. Uh, and then we ask them to develop a envelope, building envelope that would actually facilitate the best operation of the, the function that we, uh, the program that we proposed. So typically that's about five to six weeks. Uh, we have studios uh, twice a week. So this is about like 10 to 12 sessions. And what they do is they do daylight simulation, mostly daylight simulation, ventilation simulation, uh, using software. And also we have a lot of uh, instruments. So they go to the field and measure on-site measurements. Um, and, uh, and then they integrate that and come up with a new facade uh, or, or even building envelope like rooftop uh, daylighting strategies. So this is the first project. Um, so this went on uh, because we start the school in September. Uh, so there was no impact for this studio if you uh, consider 2019-20 academic year. The second project is a, a social sustainability project pretty much taking one of the current social issues like uh, most of the time we take uh, the growing elderly population, uh, not only in Hong Kong, I mean around Asia, um, so that's that's the kind of project that we do um, and that is more research uh, oriented project and more design that is the time they get to design their own uh, facilities because the first project is a given building uh, 
Uh, and the last project is the one that actually was really impacted because the last project is the one that we do outside Hong Kong. Uh, we uh, usually go to Thailand uh, because I worked for UN before. So with my links, um, I initiate projects in Thailand um, and uh, we look at very uh, uh, crucial issues like flooding or uh, urban farming and uh, uh, sorry, uh, rural farming in Chema and things like that. So mostly the flooding. Uh, and this year we were almost about to go there um, and we could not go because the whole COVID thing came up and then the travel restrictions and things like that. So I'm going to take you through the journey, what we do and then how we shifted from there, right? So this is a this is the Thailand uh, project that I was talking about, the overseas trip. Uh, the learning value of this one is not so much about just learning from the teachers in Hong Kong, but this is also for them to really engage with the government officials and the community, the villagers and experts of flood modeling and all that uh, opportunity for them to really go into government bureaus and talk to people and have that exposure um, and also talk to the villagers. Um, uh, so this was not, I mean, we couldn't go ahead with uh, uh, that project this year. And another very important project that we do, I mean, uh, Juhai is a, uh, is a very uh, uh, sort of like a unique, I would say a boutique school. We are not big. Uh, like Hong Kong U or Chinese University, our studio's capacity is like uh, for Master of Architecture is 50. Uh, so, uh, so what we do is like we actually, we are very strong in sustainability. Uh, we have a number of experts in different areas of sustainability. So we try to in integrate that into the studio. So this is one of the projects that we do uh, with children. Um, and last year it was very, very successful. It went in media. Um, uh, it's, uh, the project used uh, recycled material and created creative furniture, engaging uh, students, uh, children, ethnic minority children, uh, designing with them and uh, developing with them. Uh, so it was a very, very insightful project, but unfortunately we couldn't go ahead. So last year when we were doing it, we actually invited uh, different professors from uh, five different countries. So Taiwan, Belgium, uh, New Zealand, Singapore, and the rest of us are from Hong Kong. Uh, so, so it, it couldn't do it this year. Uh, so a typical year, what we do is like our final presentations are always attended by practitioners or uh, professors from the other universities, because that is kind of like a benchmarking uh, exercise for us to know what they expect and uh, what we do and things like that. We also go to those universities and do uh, guest critiques. Uh, so this is, I mean, you can see the students are there, the, the guest critics are there, nobody's wearing masks and there's no social distancing. There are a lot of models. And uh, so this is how a typical year, uh, how we function. Uh, and we also use a lot of environmental uh, simulate, uh, like physical models to simulate. And also uh, we have a lot of facilities uh, like even a wind tunnel in the school for students to really model and uh, look at their, um, how the wind flows and things like that. And also other uh, different kinds of gadgets. Uh, uh, so this year, uh, we could not allow these facilities, uh, access to these facilities because of the social distancing two meter uh, you can't have more than how many people in a tiny wind tunnel room, right? So it, it didn't really work. Uh, and also our studios, every student has a, a desk space of um, 1.5 to 2 square meter. And, uh, the, and the studios are 24 hour open. So basically students live there. And I mean, that is also a reason. Uh, I mean, the ho Hong Kong houses are very small. So students get that opportunity to stay in the studio and have a bit of a sleep and also work overnight. Uh, so that's kind of like the studio culture. I know it's happening in the other countries as well, but now uh, see, do, during COVID, we could not allow studios to open because we will have no control over how many students, how close they uh, stick together. Um, so the studios are closed and that was a major uh, challenge on, uh, from the students' uh, point of view. 
And we also do a lot of uh, site visits um, in the, taking students out and visiting green buildings or sites. Uh, this year uh, could not do it. Uh, we actually had to uh, shift the Thailand project to Hong Kong and ask students to do it by themselves in small groups. So it was like uh, not really taking as a big group in a bus and go there visit, not that way, but individually managing. Uh, they are master's students there. So it was not a big difficulty for them to self-organize themselves. Um, so still it was okay. Uh, so, uh, so this is uh, what I was just mentioning about um, that we had to shift uh, this overseas project, typically either Bangkok or Chiang Mai, uh, to Hong Kong. One of the similar contexts, uh, an island uh, with fisheries and ecological value. Uh, so the project has to be shifted to a local context. But the experience wise, like meeting government officials and all those UN pro uh, officials, that that is not possible to organize. I mean, again, um, this last semester, we were not quite prepared for COVID. It, was, it came as a shock to everybody. Um, fortunately, Hong Kong was never locked down. So we still could go out within the country, but within limitations. Uh, but, uh, but we were not really ready to do what, how we would operate. But for the next year, I will share with you some ideas how we are going to do if this situation continues to keep the schools closed. Uh, so this year, uh, during the COVID, uh, what I could say actually is the output did not really uh, uh, change. I mean, it wasn't affected. Students performed, students produced the same level of work other than the physical models because we, our physical model making facilities, the CNC uh, room and the laser cutters and 3D printers, uh, if we just allow them access we don't know how close they will get, how, I mean, what will happen, there's no monitoring. So we didn't open. So the physical models were actually uh, had to be replaced uh, with uh, digital models, which they do anyways, uh, and a video of showing all the details and the experiences through the building and different sites of the buildings and all that. So this is the video, if we have time, I will go through it later. So some of the our deliverables had to change. Um, and um, and the studio was completely conducted on Zoom. I'm not a big Zoom fan. Uh, I think Zoom has a lot of um, limitations when it comes to sketching. I mean, in architectural studio, as uh, the previous speaker uh, explained, there's a lot of uh, dialogue and idea sharing uh, between the tutors and the students at the same time. Be, uh, among the, uh, the students. So there's a lot of this kind of things. That's how we learn. But uh, in, in Zoom, it is very much limited. Uh, you can just take very simple tools to draw something. That's what you can do, right? Uh, but you can't do beyond that. Um, and the site analysis, typically, uh, we do, uh, like in the studio, uh, together uh, with the tutors. But this time, the site analysis was actually done by individual student, but coordinated uh, remotely, uh, um, remote collaboration. So again, there are, uh, that's not the best way to do a site analysis, but that was the best possibility we had. Uh, and the other tool we use besides uh, Zoom is Moodle. Uh, this one we used uh, for, I mean, we have been using this for few semesters now. Uh, and this year, we had to really uh, aggressively use it uh, for uh, assessment and uh, for uh, uh, content management. Uh, and it's actually a very friendly tool because for content management side, it's very, very good. Uh, but it's not a presentation uh, tool. Uh, it's, it's a tool for managing content, managing assessment and things like that. So uh, I run uh, quizzes every week. For, this is not for studio, this is for another course uh, and it gets auto-marked. Um, uh, so it's actually very good uh, in, in a way that students can always access their material many times and then uh, also do um, uh, go through their quizzes that they did previously. Uh, so uh, we had to shift quite uh, aggressively towards simulation uh, works. 
instead of doing really physical model simulation, uh, we had to shift to software simulations. Uh, so we were doing a lot of uh, this kind of simulations using uh, Dialux and Vlux and uh, uh, previously, we used Ecotect a lot, now not anymore because the license actually ran out. And um, now we use uh, Environment and uh, Rhino CFD and uh, Ladybug, all these kind of uh, software. Right. So, um, and then I uh, did an online. Uh, the, uh, uh, teaching effectiveness survey to understand how effective is this Zoom thing if we are going to continue in the next semester, which I think is going to happen, uh, the schools will not be open 100%. Uh, so we will still have to depend pretty much on Zoom uh, quite a bit. So some of the things came up is that students still prefer face-to-face. -face. Uh, studio and theory courses, that's their best uh, option. That's the, what they're asking for. But certain aspects improved, like self-discipline uh, in terms of participation. Uh, students also said there's lack of motivation, but that also pushes them to be have self-discipline. Uh, and also, like in terms of efficiency, managing their content, and everything is already uh, in digital format when it comes to final presentations. But in a typical studio, yeah, everything is in the sketchbook. And then uh, in the last few uh, months, they will start putting uh, into digital form, right? Uh, but here, because of the presentation mode, everything was digital since day one. Um, and uh, so some of the other feedback was that it limits their ideas, uh, the ability to express ideas freely. Um, and, uh, but again, some say, yeah, it helps me to prepare my stuff there. Um, uh, so these were some of the feedback. Uh, I'm still running this um, uh, survey uh, for the whole school. This is just from the master's students. Uh, and uh, just to explain what I mentioned before, uh, about the Hong Kong living situation, you can imagine having to study. So this is kind of how they live, a tiny bunk bed and next to a toilet that is shared by the whole family. And so some of the things students actually said is that uh, one big problem I heard from the other speaker as well, the, the instability of the Wi-Fi system uh, and, and also background noise and technical problems cannot concentrate when the other people in the house are moving around. Uh, so there are a lot of things. And some students even said that sitting in one place is like really tiring and it's not good for learning. So, uh, so there are these challenges by learning uh, from the house. Uh, that is something we will have to look into for planning for the future. Uh, because Hong Kong is not in lockdown, we still can allow them to come, but we have to minimize like the studio occupancy to 50%. So we need to find new venues to operate, larger venues to operate. Right now we have opened up our uh, crit rooms uh, for students to use because the master or uh, the final year thesis uh, presentations are upcoming. So they need space to work. So we had to open up all the crit rooms for them to work. Uh, with two meter, two meter distance partitioning, wearing masks, all that. Uh, so for the future, uh, this is, uh, these are some of the ideas. I was, uh, I was thinking like, since we are already in the virtual studio mode, cyber mode, why don't we push it forward? Why don't we really push it to the extent that we don't have to limit by the boundaries? We don't have to limit anything within Hong Kong. Uh, so these are the universities we typically collaborate with. So for the first project, I'm going to try and see how it goes uh, because it's a very short project. We could even make it even shorter uh, to get all these schools engaged doing the same project, a short project, and with the inputs from different uh, faculties. I think that's the beauty of uh, virtual learning. You don't have to really depend on your own teachers. And you can also collaborate with students from the other universities and get to know people. 
uh, make contacts and learn from other professors uh, because our exchange programs at the moment are not happening. Uh, we typically have exchange programs to Belgium, uh, Taiwan, Thailand, Korea, and uh, what are the other countries? Uh, New Zealand. So right now, all the borders are closed. So we cannot actually send out students uh, and they don't come to our school either. So this is a way that we can actually uh, uh, bridge that uh, uh, gap and then uh, make it function in a normal way. Uh, so this is one of the ideas actually to get collaboration with the other uh, schools. Um, the other idea is that, um, again, uh, about borderless learning, uh, to uh, really open up uh, to learn and collaborate with other universities, get uh, other professors from other universities and also access uh, sort of like library access uh, to access the other libraries uh, in other universities and other facilities like net uh, license sharing or software sharing uh, collaborative group learning and learning from uh, practitioners um, these things don't happen on a typical year because everybody's very busy but uh, and also our school is located away from the city center. So that is also difficult for uh, practitioners or the professors from the other universities to travel. So, but with online learning, that is, that is a beauty that you don't have to really travel. I mean, look at that. We are now doing this conference in different countries. Uh, so that's all possible. I think we should really uh, tap into that uh, possibility uh, and the, and the, uh, the positive side of online learning, although it is difficult, but at the same time, students mood will change because they are thinking in different terms, but still we have to address the issue of studying inside the house with the rest of the family members around. So this is where uh, we are now strengthening our IT capabilities, uh, laboratories, and the studio facilities for students to give options where they can actually, if they want to come to school, they can come to school and study online, then study online. Uh, because if the government uh, issue a mandate uh, asking us to close the schools, we cannot open school officially, but we can give students choices to uh, accommodate their learning uh, needs. So I guess that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's, the, uh, that's what I have to share. Happy to answer any questions um, about Hong Kong context or about uh, what Johai does. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rufina. Uh, thank you for sharing about how you try to uh, shift the learning method in your institution uh, due to the current situation. Uh, and then the next, uh, again, for all participants, if you have a question, please write in the chat and uh, we can discuss some of the questions uh, later on or Dr. Rufina can also respond directly in the chat. Uh, the third speaker will be from Taiwan, uh, Dr. Kuowei Elazer Godfrey Chu, also known as Dr. Casey. Uh, unfortunately, due to the government policy on the restriction on the use of Zoom, uh, Dr. Casey cannot join us uh, uh, in this Zoom platform. Uh, so he's going to present uh, through the video that he sent to us, but he's around in terms that uh, you can still ask questions and we are still uh, contact him, uh, in contact with him through other media. So if you have any questions, you can still ask uh, about his presentation and we will uh, try to get the answer from him uh, straight away. So before I would like to introduce Dr. Casey. Dr. Casey is an assistant professor at the Tunghai University Architectural Graduate School uh, in Taichung, Taiwan. He specializes in biomimicry urbanism, urban <coughs> design, urban morphology, and future city strategic spatial structure and design. His research area include nature-based intelligible urban design, Mars design mission for regenerative earth, and ancient urbanism. He is interested in dialectical relationship between nature, culture, space sustainability, and futurism. 
Dr. Casey is serving as the director and conveyor in chief for Master of Architecture uh, program. He established and chairs Sustainable Urbanism and Cities Future Design Think Tank and founded the Regenerative Earth and Anthropocene Design Lab since 2016. He also sits in several academic review committee as well as design competitions for both locally and internationally. He was awarded special scientific research talent in 2014 and 15 from the National Science Council in Taiwan. And his research on future cities was awarded the best research paper in the premium international conference in civil engineering and architecture in Singapore in May 2019. Uh, through the video presentation, Dr. Casey will present about the protocols and architecture and design studio in the new normal period from Thailand's perspective. Please play the video. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, web seminar. Well, regarding the protocols on architecture, cities, and landscape design studio in the new normal period where everyone is uh, affected by it. Um, in terms of Taiwan's perspective, I can share a little bit of uh, what our experiences is in the Donghai Architecture School. In particular, my own studio, Urban Design Studio. Well, there are some preconditions that needs to be observed in this pandemic. Well like for instance measuring temperature before you enter into the studio and frequent hand washing have a sanitizer ready uh, at the doorway of the studio so before the students comes in they should observe all this and if the space is allowed keeping social distancing like indoor in taiwan we are observing uh, if it's indoor environment, is 1.5 meters distance between each individuals. If it's outdoor, you, you can have a little bit loose on the distance, it's about one meter. And track, keep a track on all the individuals' travel histories. I think these are the preconditions or the measures that you, we all have to observe in this pandemic. Well, in terms of studio, in reality, it is quite difficult to observe the 1.5 meters spacing between uh, students and between the instructors. And what we did is that um, we uh, have a rearrangement of uh, we invite the students only come to the studio if necessary. Otherwise, we rely on the online uh, seminars, online technologies to see each other. So how is that being done for a studio setting? Sometimes uh, people will still rely on the face-to-face -face interactions in order to get the design language or the message across. So this is what uh, I have been doing. First. Um, we need to know that uh, I have been trying to limit the needs to travel to and from the studios uh, as possible. And then also limit the needs to study on site. So if the studio is based on a, a, a site heavy project, for instance, you have to travel to the sites for analysis or for study frequently um, this is the opportunity to uh, not to travel to the sites as much as needed there are ways to do it this is how I do it I increase the pre-study component and the research components and relying on share open data or relying on um, pre-studied preparations. So in, in that sense, um, in the past, design studios rely on the on-site study. would have to be changed so that the students would not be asked to travel so frequently and exposing themselves uh, being uh, uh, um, 
affected by, by the virus. So if it's not going to be on-site uh, studied, and there are things that needs to be done. First, the selection of topics and the thematic topics will be more on the issues based rather than site based. If we are dealing with, uh, for instance, my studio, we are, we are dealing with a climate change. And in that sense that we can uh, apply the design for climate change onto uh, many, many uh, common uh, sites throughout the world. So in that sense that we increase seminar discussions rather than uh, on-site study, relying on uh, totally on-site studies. And uh, number two, the second point is that uh, try to establish the factors or the uh, site analytical parameters from available uh, outcome of the research. So the students will uh, be increased in spending their time doing research, reading up, and then do a more frequent uh, feedbacks or communication through the online uh, media. So uh, they will report back to us more frequently. And, but each of the reporting that um, will, the instructor will guide them to formulate a parameter which is based on their study. So based on that parameter or the factors, design factors, such as if, you, if we study from the site, uh, the site which covers a significant issue so this is the time that we help them to structure the factors. The significant issues may be uh, five or six factors influencing the site, influencing uh, uh, the eminence of the site. So that uh, this, when we study, when we, uh, before we go into the design studios, uh, these are important things uh, to grab. Then um, the next point is uh, it is an opportunity in this pandemic for us all to move away uh, from familiar site selection for the design studio. So traditionally or in the past, we rely on the on-site studies method for design studios. And in the pandemic, this is what we are refocusing ourselves into these uh, three points which I'm going to illustrate. First, our studio can refocus on connecting to global issues. Then our studio also refocus on reflecting emerging issues. Third, we have the opportunity for studio to refocus on envisioning for the future. So by doing that, we can move away from this uh, on-site, the need for a very frequent on-site visits. So uh, issues, global issues, uh, emerging issues, and future issues. So these are the things that um, my studios has been practicing in Donghai. And the next point is um, there will be a need to increase communication frequency by shortening uh, the time taken in each online meeting and discussion with uh, design students. That means the students, uh, each time when we have uh, online meetings, for instance, each students are asked to prepare 
in the past, they are asked to prepare for 30 minutes individually to present their work or even longer. But in this time, we are asked them to do a preparations before they present their findings. So that will shorten the time, which means 15 minutes. So we reduce the reporting time, uh, students reporting time uh, in, into half. And that is the uh, the the uh, the time duration has been shortened, but we are increasing the frequency, which means if we are meeting twice a week for studio, then we will increase it to three times. Is that finished, Ibunande? Not yet, Bubita. I'm going to play the second video, part of the oh. video. Continue to the second part. Please wait. Therefore, by increasing the frequency, and we are allowed to uh, shorten each individual student's uh, presentation time. If that is possible, uh, my studio, I find that is quite um, effective in terms of helping the student to prepare uh, their design work. And in terms of um, Stop sharing. Therefore, by increasing the frequency, and we are allowed to uh, shorten each individual student's uh, presentation time. If that is possible, uh, my studio, I find that is quite um, effective in terms of helping the student to prepare uh, their design work. And in terms of um, the technical requirements, and all these are possible if we can keep it to the minimum. So in order to operate uh, urban design studios in the pandemic, we do not need sophisticated technologies. All we need is uh, a place where you can get online, either at home or in schools. Or um, the best is with your iPhone, cell phones, your smartphones. If you are, have access to those technologies, and the, we can operate the design studios. Okay. Um, one last point here is that uh, for us, when we are running the urban design studios, we are also focusing on the outcome, which means when we have instructed all that we can, when we have go online, having uh, research seminars, feedbacks, discussions, when we have done all that, we still need to see what the student have put on the paper or what they have sketched or what they have drawn. And what we, well, what I often ask them to do is to snapshot or to prepare and to Therefore, by increasing the frequency, and we are allowed to uh, shorten each individual student's uh, presentation time. If that is possible, uh, 
my studio, I find that it's quite um, effective in terms of helping the student to prepare uh, their design work. And in terms of um, the technical requirements, and all these are possible if we can keep it to the minimum. So in order to operate uh, urban design studios in the pandemic, we do not need sophisticated technologies. All we need is uh, a place where you can get online, either at home or in schools. Or um, the best is with your iPhone, cell phones, your smartphones. If you are, have access to those technologies, and the, we can operate the design studios. Okay, um, one last point here is that uh, for us, when we are running the urban design studios, we are also focusing on the outcome, which means when we have instructed all that we can, when we have go online, having a research seminars, feedbacks, discussions, when we have done all that, we still need to see what the student have put on the paper, or what they have sketched, or what they have drawn, and what we, well, what I often ask them to do is to snapshot or to prepare and turn that into a PDF format or even image files and then send it over from their smartphone technologies. And in that sense, I can preview their work and give them the feedbacks even before the time that is needed to meet online. So a lot of work is actually work from home model, which means we get the preparation done at home. Okay, um, just to round up, remember the, some of the points that I have shared across. Focus on connecting to global issues. Focus on reflecting emerging issues. Focus on um, envisioning for the future. So these are the, uh, the, the core, the fundamentals of an issue-based uh, design studio and in that sense as if we are learning a lot from uh, top-notch international design competitions there's a good opportunity for my students we actually entering uh, uh, using the international design competitions in their design brief and entering into the design as well as reformulating based on the international design competitions. So we are running our own uh, so-called uh, in-studio design competitions. So the way that we instruct the students it is, is really uh, affected by the pandemic by like everyone else. And that's how uh, we operate them. And just to conclude, uh, for the student outcomes, um, we are asking them to print out and also pin up. But we limit uh, the, the need for the, for the other uh, uh, reviewers to be on site. So they will be just the instructors of the studio and with the students, but with enough spacings. And we are still having that final presentations as a pin month. Um, but of course, um, I have also run other uh, graduate design studios, which uh, I am not using a pin up way. So they are actually uh, submitting their work as if they were submitting for international design competitions. And in one semester, in one that durations, we have done three, uh, the capacity of uh, uh, three international design competitions. So in that sense, we are uh, um, covering that, um, the learning capacities that is necessary to get across uh, to students in this pandemic. Thank you very much. That's all for my sharing today. Good day. Okay, thank you. Uh... Dia belum.
uh, oke okay. uh, for the presentation uh, ya yeah, we, we already have three presenters with uh, interesting topic to discuss Hello, I just want to make sure that my voice is uh, clearly. Clear, clear. Yes, clear. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, we, we already have several questions from the participants. And I think there's also there are also some questions in the uh, YouTube. In, in the YouTube channel, in our YouTube channel. So I will just choose, uh, some of the questions have been have been answered by Dr. Zairo in the chat. But I think this is an interesting question about uh, to Dr. Rufina and uh, how about the the learning of architecture that is uh, related to the sensing because. Uh, some of the activities can be changed into digital format or a virtual virtual thing, but some of the activities that is related to sensing architecture, uh, this might be difficult during the situation. Maybe Dr. Rufina, can you have your uh, thoughts about this? Uh, um, I would like to understand uh, what the uh, he or she meant by sensing. Is it the spatial? experiences in architecture or yeah. site visits or what, what, what? I, think, I think some of, i think what is meant here is that uh, some of the activities depends on the direct relationship with the place and with the space and that might be difficult during the yes yes okay agree uh, yes uh, we uh, one one part of the pedagogy is actually to learning by visiting places and experiencing places uh, which was not possible during COVID uh, because of the regulations about social distancing. Uh, so that uh, uh, that part of uh, pedagogy had to be uh, replaced by other ways of uh, looking at it. For example, uh, one student did a, a, a studio project uh, about a smell experiencing center in a fishing village. So the whole thing was not being able to really go and, I mean, there's no such places in Hong Kong smell experiential centers, but, uh, but uh, he had to do a lot of research in order to understand how these spaces look like and simulate them uh, in order to see these kind of effects, uh, pressure, fluid dynamics, uh, things like that. So, uh, Yes, a real experience of going to a place and understanding spaces and learning from how other architects have designed and what, what these spaces mean to the function and to the uh, users. That part wasn't possible uh, because I also take students to a lot of green buildings to experience um, internal uh, environmental quality and they talk to users but this this time it was we were not allowed to even access these places so yes that was challenged okay uh, thank you for your uh, thoughts uh, another question that i will take from the audience is uh, maybe this one can be regarding the uh, first so, uh, because the first year student never have any experience, a little or non experience with the studio environment. So, how do you think they will deal with this new normal pedagogy and how the lecturer can engage with them? Perhaps, Dr. Zairo, you can share your thought about this. Right. Um, <clears throat> we, we always have a, a problem with this, uh, the, the fundamental part of the studio where. Uh, especially for the freshies, they need uh, more nurturing uh, parts from the lecturers because um, uh, when we tested this sole methodology is meant for master students because they are much more independent and then they can, you know, they much more experienced. <clears throat> uh, we also, um, yeah, this is the challenge because uh, when we talk about um, uh, in especially in Malaysia, we're still doing this manual drawing. We're still doing this uh, um, uh, manu manual sketching, technical drawing, and everything. 
but uh, based on my experience in uh, Delft, Netherlands, uh, uh, the architecture is uh, already uh, changed. Uh, they they no longer using this uh, <clears throat> manual training, but rather doing manual using computer. So they sketch um, using the sketch tab, and then straight away, um, you know, transfer digitally to to the computer. So. Uh, maybe it's about time for our region to, you know, to think about um, this is uh, this is the, the the new norm that we need to, you know, to change also. I think it's a, it needs a debate uh, whether you know we we can uh, change the. I know some some of the uh, conventional architects still uh, think that no, we cannot uh, scrap this out. This is our our core business uh, uh, to, to nurture the freshies. But yeah, uh, th it, it, this is something that we need to think about. Uh, so maybe in the next future is um, how we want to adapt technology, but still using the sketches so, and then transfer it to, to, to the computer. So yeah, that is uh, I think one of the idea. Yeah, thank you, Dr. <clears throat> Uh, another question, uh, which is I think very important, is about the how we conduct the crit of the design studio with this online uh, teaching, online platform, and also maybe this is also related to another question about uh, what kind of rubric, how, how is the rubric in uh, the assessment of the teaching. So the first one perhaps for uh, Dr. Zairul, and the second one is for Dr. Rufine. So about assessment, right? About the crit, but how do you have studio crit in this one? Okay. Uh, as mentioned, uh, we changed from uh, physical to on online Zoom. Um, if you hate Zoom, you can still use uh, other other tools. We have Webex uh, and so other other online um, uh, online uh, materials. And um, it depends on the capability of the student. If uh, the internet is not that good, we allow to use WhatsApp. Okay, uh, so because uh, normally WhatsApp is uh, will not take much uh, data uh, compared to Zoom and other materials. So we we can alternate, and then um, <clears throat> just uh, I think last two weeks, uh, government of Malaysia already allow uh, gathering for smaller group not more than 25. So right now we interchangeably, we change between uh, physical face-to-face -face and also online. <clears throat> Mostly we focus, uh, we focus face-to-face uh, -to -face towards uh, problematic student and uh, online towards uh, student who can, uh, you know, who need uh, less uh, uh, monitoring. So yeah, interchange interchangeably we can use uh, both face-to-face uh, -face and also uh, online. Thank you. Dr. Rufina, perhaps you can uh, share. Right. Um, I will share a, a little bit about both questions. Uh, for Master Studio, uh, we were allowed to actually have the physical presentations. Uh, they're mature students, uh, they know how to self-organize and that time the requirement was not more than eight people in a room. Uh, so what we did was uh, we only allowed the person, the student who present and the tutors uh, in the room. Uh, so everybody was wearing masks, so it was uh, kind of safe. Uh, and for the bachelor students, other than for the final year students, uh, all the presentations had to be done online. So what we suggested was that students to upload their work into a cloud drive. So the teachers have access to it and they can look at it parallel when they are presenting if they want to go back and forth or see the sequence of the panel layouts and things like that. So it was still done uh, online, uh, but uh, with uh, access from both sides, uh, having the resources to look at their work. Uh, all the models were done at home, so they're not the real professional kind of models, but we asked them to upload their photos of the models, whatever they have, all the material, and then uh, that's how it was done. Um, some of the skill sets were not 
able to deliver, particularly year one in Zhuhai, is very hands-on. They depend very much on hand sketches and uh, technical drawing by hand uh, for a period of time before they get into digital and they make a lot of models. So some of the skills that were not uh, able to deliver last year, we are planning to run a crash course uh, soon after the next semester starts, if the school really starts. So two weeks before they get into year two. So that's how it was. Regarding the rubrics, um, yes, I had to amend the rubrics because the rubrics, one of the requirements is to actually have uh, physical models and also verbal presentations and uh, presentation panels, all that is in the rubrics. Uh, the rest of it, uh, our rubrics actually, a uh, very big part of our rubrics uh, constitute of a research part and the design process documentation uh, part. And the uh, real outcome and graphics like that uh, is actually a smaller part. So the bigger part, still we could go ahead and ask them to do the research and it is a good time to actually do the research um, online and they have plenty of time. They don't have to travel to school, they save time. And uh, so that part was still there. And the design process documentation happened since day one because they were documenting what they were doing digitally and then finally presenting. So the things that actually had to uh, take out from the rubrics were the physical models and, uh, and presentation and panels and printable panels and stuff like that. Uh, but we still ask for those things uh, without the physical models. We ask for a video a clip of their uh, project uh, inside, outside, uh, and certain details. And uh, we increase the need for detailed drawings. Uh, so that way we can actually see how things, uh, if they were making the models and that translated into a, a 2D format instead of a 3D format. So that's how we manage. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rifida. So uh, for the last question in this panel, I would like to highlight the question from uh, Iburuli about uh, for, for, for Dr. Casey. Could you explain your explanation about the idea of focusing on global and future issues rather than understanding site conventionally? Uh, Dr. Casey already respond here. I will read the response, the, the answer. About the idea of focusing on global and future issues, these are needed to rely upon open sources and media research more intensely than the conventional site visit. And because of this, the need for frequent site visits can be reduced and mitigated for the COVID period. And by responding to global issues such as pandemic, urban, and public space design uh, as a topic are quite timely to respond for design relevance, especially in this special pandemic time. I think this is quite uh, some interesting thought for us uh, to consider when thinking about our uh, design studio uh, in the future. Okay, uh, I will continue to the, uh, thank you for the three speakers for the sharing about uh, the shifting of the learning platform. Uh, now we will move on to the second panel, which will consist of uh, three other speakers uh, from Indonesia and from India. Uh, the first speaker in the board here is Dr. Aswin Indra Prasta. Dr. Aswin Indra Prasta is a Associate Professor in Computational Design, the School of Architecture, Planning, and Policy Development at Institute Technology Bandung, or ITD. Dr. Aswin is currently the Deputy Head Tour of Architecture Education of Ikatan Arsitek Indonesia, Jawa Barat, and the Vice Chairman of Asosiasi Perguruan Tinggi Arsitektur Indonesia, Raptari. He obtained his PhD from Shibaura Institute of Technology, Tokyo, in 2011 and then from 2012 become the member of Architecture Design Research Group in ITD. His field of research is in computational design, beam design representation, and modeling. Uh, from 2016 to 2020, Dr. Aswin is the head of undergraduate program uh, of architecture, and recently he has been appointed as the Vice Dean of Academic Affairs. He is the member of ITB Board of Reviewer and also the member of ITB BIM Development Team, member of Computer Aided Architectural Design Research in Asia, and also the International Peer Review Committee for 
C-A-A-D-R-I-A. In professional practice, Dr. Aswin, also the Associate Architect and BIM Advisor for Beta and Arcon Engineering, is involved as Deputy Project Manager in several projects in uh, Bandung, Yogyakarta, and some other parts of Indonesia. Uh, Dr. Aswin will present uh, maybe more specific about uh, how to deal with uh, this COVID uh, pandemic situation, uh, uh, sharing about uh, the practice in ITB. Dr. Aswin, please, the time is yours. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Professor Paramita, for the introduction. I hope uh, all of you can hear my, my voice, yeah? Uh, okay, yes. I'd like to share my screen for the presentation. Okay, do you all uh, see the uh, screen share? Yes, Pastor. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Uh, so this is uh, my title of the presentation. So actually, uh, we are now uh, facing the same uh, the same challenges uh, in architectural education, mainly be because of the new uh, paradigm uh, already mentioned by uh, previous speakers. Uh, so we, we we don't we don't say why uh, we facing this uh, issues, but mainly we we would asking how we can overcome these issues. I would like to highlight three uh, particular um, aspects about this uh, <clears throat> this uh, strategy to overcome this issue. The first one is how to ensure the learning objective of studio based courses due to the pandemic and embracing the new normal afterwards. The second is how to minimize the gap of learning objective between conventional studio and full online studio or uh, hybrid studio. The third one, how we can embrace a new paradigm of a studio-based uh, learning environment. So uh, as with uh, previous speakers, we uh, conducting small assessment uh, on our students in early June 2020, uh, regarding the the experience they have been facing uh, during uh, implementation of uh, online based courses from uh, the beginning of lockdown until the end of the semester, uh, which is uh, by the end of uh, May. So uh, this uh, study conducted by one of our uh, lecturer. So actually there are mixed uh, answer from the student regarding the, the work from home or the work in the studio. But uh, the main issue here is to uh, the student uh, has no idea how uh, they can uh, uh, join the, the studio uh, offline or remain online for the next semester and afterwards. Uh, in in our case, uh, most of the uh, some of the students uh, don't have problem whether they can uh, continue their work from home or in the studio. But of course, uh, uh, there are some issues with the with the uh, psychological aspect of the students and also with the with the tutor and the lecturer. Our university also uh, conducted assessment uh, to all the students uh, by the end of the semester. Uh, and the summary uh, I highlighted here, 70% of students prefer synchronous video platform for the two-way communication between lecturer and the students using Zoom, Meet, or other uh, means of uh, platform. And uh, 20% of them prefer streaming content because they can uh, play uh, whenever they, they want to play the, the, the lectures. 60% of students feel overload with online assignment more than regular assignment because they feel that when the lecturer convert uh, the, the usual or regular uh, course into the online, so they feel they, they, the, the the assignment is overload uh, 
overburden with the the, the uh, more than the regular assignment. Almost 70 percent of the student did not enjoy online courses by the lecturer because uh, they feel bored uh, with the with the uh, with the media, and they feel it didn't help to understand the content. And this is the main issue with our uh, uh, our application to online platform by the end of this semester. But the other the other uh, the other way, uh, almost 50 percent of the students have positive expectation that online course will make their lecturer perform better. 48.2% uh, of the students feel that online course is boring and not inter interesting and not attractive. So they feel uh, it wasting their time. About the new protocol for the studio, uh, I think uh, there are four aspects to be considered. The first is how we educate the new protocol for the studio for all, not only uh, the student, but also uh, lecturer, uh, teaching assistant, and also supporting staff. The second is we all we are all have to understand the situation and make changes, not in the future, but now. The third one is we have to embrace new things now, not tomorrow, not, not uh, next month, but now. And the last one, something never changed uh, regarding the, 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 the migration from the regular uh, pedagogy uh, aspect to the online base. That is empathy, com compassion, and encouragement. The new protocol for studio also uh, have uh, three factors that I think the most important that already mentioned by previous speakers. The first one is how to maintain the studio interaction between mentor and the student, the, the tutor and the student. This is the key because the studio interaction nurtures the discipline, motivation, and also self-appreciation. This establish, this, this uh, previous speakers already uh, mentioned uh, and proposing the establishment of new digital platform to accommodate the pin up, for example, uh, reviews and grids as metaphor uh, for the usual uh, studio culture interaction. The second one is uh, how we can uh, maintain the critical thinking of the student to select, to store, to process, and to cultivate information because a new, uh, new normal for the studio and for other things is information. How, how we can increase uh, our student ability to have critical think, think, thinking to process the information. The third one is embracing digital process based on digital data means the digital and computing literate. Preview, previous speakers already mentioned about the, the, the envisioning, the vision, issue-based studio rather than uh, site-based studio and all uh, uh, involving the digital and how to uh, cultivate the potential of the digital data. The last one is we have to find out the new media to ease and accommodate and also uh, the affordability of the gesture, uh, tactile, and two-way interaction between mentor and students, or, or, or also between student and students. This uh, involving uh, two changes in a studio. The first one is change in pedagogy, how to deliver knowledge, how to uh, providing uh, interaction between one to one, one to many, peer interaction and also how to how to increase the personal or interpersonal development the next the preparation is a change in platform or medium using blended learning synchronous or unsynchronous medium flip classroom multimedia and social media so these changes involving all of the stakeholders in uh, architectural education, not also uh, students, but also uh, lecturer. 
recommendation we we have recommendation from the university of uh, developing online based course the first is the the concept of online course is learner center education increasing students engagement through exploration and self study in a monitor and program way the second online course must be interactive this this one is a uh, uh, hard to practice and hard to implement because uh, the, the the development of interactive media is not just as simple as uh, converting uh, regular media into the online platform uh, this interactive must be both synchronous and un uh, asynchronous modes with the proper platform next uh, university mandates that every faculty need to provide studio room for recording uh, multimedia with proper equipment and next uh, we have to develop our own protocols for production assessment evaluation and monitoring online courses so uh, in our case uh, during pandemic uh, hopefully by the end of uh, 2020 all studio and courses are online based but afterwards uh, beginning in 2021 first we will have a hybrid studio and courses using blended learning and flipped classroom so uh, yeah the, the the concept and strategy to 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 begin a new protocol for studio focusing on safe and healthy state for lecturers students and supporting staff by avoiding a new cluster endorsing work from home in current situation and hybrid studio approach is likely become a new normal for studio courses still with multi-layered safety protocols the next is uh, preparing or reformulating the pedagogy endorsing design by data uh, already mentioned by previous speakers uh, increasing the capability and uh, uh, for the modeling and simulation preparing workspace uh, for the hybrid studio physical distancing room capacity cross ventilation circulation not less than uh, two meter width avoiding crowded space and etc and also preparing schedules uh, hours based studio work that strict studio for offline discussion and tutorial the next is preparing infrastructure for example subsidized internet data package for the lecturer uh, academic assistant and also students providing or lending a pc laptop for the lecturer and students because we closed our uh, computer lab during the pandemic and we utilize that computer to lend to the students who need and also lecturer who need the uh, for the work from home and also providing tablets with stylus for uh, lecturer because we know the interact two way interaction is impossible with the uh, uh, flat, flat monitors and also mouse and uh, keyboard and then to minimize this gap we have to provide the uh, medium that mimicking the uh, pencils and also paper and also uh, we 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 begin to look for virtual collaborative platform as also mentioned by professor uh, zubair from malaysia by using padlet for example uh, the last that uh, may be a consequence of this online base is online storages because uh, previously uh, we we didn't uh, uh, prioritize the online storage but in the beginning of the uh, online based uh, studio uh, this is become the big issues so uh, like uh, uh, professor uh, rufina mentioned we also uh, utilize the online platform based on model for blended learning as uh, visualized here uh, some uh, studio already uh, use this to deliver the, the the lecturers and also to uh, for online submission and grading of course this has uh, some limitation but uh, in the meantime uh, this uh, platform is okay for for uh, for the time being 
Uh, another platform for blended learning is using Google Classroom and also YouTube channel for asynchronous model, uh, asynchronous mode, uh, I mean. And also uh, we utilize Zoom and Meet for uh, synchronous mode, including, uh, including uh, create session and also uh, FIFA uh, with a small uh, classes. Another important is online platform for exhibition and portfolio. We all migrate to online base, as uh, we can see here, because we no longer, uh, uh, yeah, uh, we have to adapt to the new, new media to uh, to uh, appreciate uh, to have appreciation for the students. So we, we uh, develop uh, our own. Uh, protocols based on the general protocol by the national uh, uh, national uh, regulation and also university regulation. Uh, we uh, develop the our base studio schedule limiting the group of the students based on the uh, year and also studio groups. Offline meeting is complementary of online course. So, uh, uh, Maybe for the next semester, beginning the next year, offline meeting is complementary, not mandatory. This is part of the new normal. Next also, the densification of the studio by, by re-layouting workstation, limiting access to library, adopting online access, and also we have to redefine outdoor space for the workspace for the students. Uh, also, uh, in our building, we have to reconfiguring the circulation route that uh, 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 dividing the uh, outcome and income uh, uh, students. Yeah, uh, in the last, uh, the last, uh, the last uh, slide. We, uh, at least in our context, we hope for the best, but also prepare for the worst. Uh, in education, uh, formulating hybrid studio for a hybrid method for studio by exploiting potential of the digital data and platform. But we also have to educate the digital and computing literacy for lecturer and students, and also providing technical assistance for tutorial uh, both for the uh, uh, lecturer and also the assistant. The next preparation that we have to uh, process is uh, uh, preparing uh, or evaluating improving blended learning with integrated multimedia delivery, assignment submission, and also grading method. Uh, we have to develop multimedia channel for video courses collection. We have to uh, provide the cloud storage, online subscription for software, data, and other services, and also online platform uh, for exhibition. Thank you. I think that's all my presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Pak Aswin. I think uh, it's very uh, informative uh, presentation uh, that is very useful for all the participants uh, that we have ideas about what kind of things that we need to prepare for the new normal. Uh, we will continue to the next presenter. Uh, the next presenter will be from India and he's going to share about uh, the curriculum uh, content uh, that is related to the building resilience. I will first read uh, his short biography here. Professor Durganand Balsafar is the Dean of Savita College of Architecture in Chennai, India. After graduating from SACEPP Ahmedabad and ETH Zurich, Balsafar worked in Paris and Zurich uh, from returning to India to and then returning to India to work in the atelier of Pritzker Laureate Balkrishna Doshi. Balsafar founded Artists Human Settlements Research Collaborative and is involved in future cities, environment and health, disaster mitigation, rural and war refugee rehabilitation. Balsafar is the member of Barcelona AMB UN Post Habitat 3 and Berlin Climate Policy 2050 program. 
Balsawan has been on various prestigious juries and teaching in Indian and international universities, member of Chennai Master Plan and Monitoring Committee, and program for New Direction in Education by the COA. His works were exhibited in Croatia and Berlin. Uh, Savita College of Architecture collaborated with Abkhazia for International Women's School with participation from universities from Sri Lanka and Malaysia and collaboration with Cambridge University and Curtin. Uh, Dr. Bal Professor Balsafar will uh, explain about the curriculum on building resilience within social, economic, and cultural aspect in the new normal period. Please, Professor Balsafar. Thank you very much. Uh, I have to thank <coughs> the organizers uh, and Arkesia and Apari for this invitation. And the very fact that there's a new normal uh, means that you know, we are having a seminar of this kind. In fact, this is the first kind, first time I'm even having a seminar uh, with Southeast Asia. It's always been very large seminars in India. Uh, so I'm grateful. And I think most of the speakers have given very valuable points. Uh, some of the points are there in my presentation. So I think I will go faster. Could I share the screen and uh, start? Yes, please. Can you just come here? Can you look? How do I? Yeah, it's right. Is it shared? Yes. Right. Yes, I think it is. Yeah, it is sharing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I think I will, uh, since most of the speakers have covered a lot, uh, even though it's there in my slide, I may move a little faster. And uh, since it's 15 minutes, those who want, I've given certain uh, Insta pages and certain Facebook pages or online where you can refer to it in detail or write to us. Uh, I have been dealing with disaster mitigation for the last 30 years, right from the Gujarat earthquake, the tsunami. And so I have been involved with this and looking at the social, economic, and cultural. So when, when this new normal or when this pandemic came about, uh, it has taken all of us by a shock, a surprise. And I realized, we realized that on that day, we had to really change the entire studio program. So I will just discuss how we change the studio program. The curriculum is still in discussion on how we should change it. It's very early stages, but I think we've got a sense of how to balance the two. And the idea was to shift the entire curriculum now into building resilience uh, because of the uncertainty. Uh, we, and a lot of my experience of teaching in war-torn areas of uh, Croatia, Yugoslavia, and also Sri Lanka, uh, <clears throat> the students who come from uh, war tone, war zones, gave me certain insights on what we can do for this curriculum because what we don't imagine in all this is it's not only digital, but the families and the students in their homes are carrying a lot of stress. And so the studio program had to also deal with that idea of stress. Uh, so this will more or less kind of very briefly give. So let's look at the context. Till now, the real studio was always a hands-on, what I call a gestural studio. And the internet was really a secondary tool. And now let's look at the major shifts in the last three months. Distant learning and the internet have become the primary tool, the primary mediator. Uh, but what are the possibilities? The possibilities are we've been able to bring in many more experts. So it's become interdisciplinary. We've been able to cross cultures and cross boundaries. So it's become intercultural. These possibilities were there earlier, but were not exercised with the same level of uh, intensity as now. We've also managed to break across geographical regions. We're inviting architects from Southeast Asia, from South Africa, 
from South America. There's some time zone kind of uh, coordination required. But what we are seeing is the possibility of a unified field of design dialogue. And this seminar itself is, uh, is a valid, valuable uh, indication that we can, even within Southeast Asia, the schools here, we could look at a new dialogue in our first studio. So how do we evolve these? Uh, or this is really looking at our experience in the last two or three months. We've actually explored the virtual design uh, medium for the last almost three or four years, but it had not taken on a primary role. We would invite uh, jurors from out of the country. We had reviews with flat screens, uh, but it was not like the core of the semester. And now I think it's shifting into the core. So we need to find alternatives. I think the greatest challenge that we were we have been discussing is when students go online and if they were to go online all the time from morning to evening, would it alienate the students from the sensorial and physical space? Or can this become a platform for a mediation of both between the physical and the digital world? Because we found that Resilience has several components in the cultural and social context. The first component, which we find is missing in the modern world and which builds resilience because we work in remote villages of India, remote towns. And in these remote villages and remote towns, we find they have a very strong community. And when they have a very strong community, uh, the resilience gets built uh, naturally. So one, one challenge for the studio, and it's been very interesting, is how do we build this learning community both on the digital and also encourage students gradually to create their own community links in wherever they were. We have students from the Northeast, 3000 kilometers, miles from here. We have students in South India. India is a very large country. So we have students who have had to go back to their homes and really transform the way we've done the studio. So now if we look at it, we will see that this is a very creative process. We had to look at how to generate critical thinking. We had to have a knowledge of design, but the real challenge came in how do we uh, kind of allow our students to get knowledge, hands-on knowledge in construction practices uh, that too in a social distancing moment. Um, <clears throat> then, of course, there was... So it's it's really changing. The earlier studio, which came from the Bauhaus model, a very Western European model, has been highly faculty-oriented. And if we look at the models in Southeast Asia or India, uh, a great inversion is possible to shift it to a st student-centric mode. So one is the shift from the real physical to the virtual. The other is the shift that we can do from a faculty centric to a student centric. What are the challenges in this? One is the nature of collaboration, virtual collaboration now between faculty and students and many times interdisciplinary students in different parts of the country. And we can, we started generating new regional collaborations because the Northeast of India is very different from South India. The South India is very different from uh, Rajasthan, where, uh, where architect uh, Shekhawat comes from. And so I think these itself are giving us a new opportunity to look at these cultural aspects of design, which were lost with the push of the modern movement. How do we understand this new digital landscape? One. We decided that let the internet or the cloud become the new connecting library. So we've begun connecting libraries across the world and which are accessed by our students and faculty. Uh, we will be open to collaborating with uh, the universities in Southeast Asia if Arcasia can create a platform so that this web of uh, vast knowledge, one, our own studio has vast knowledge archives about India. And uh, many of it is not yet uploaded on a shareable basis. So we've started that whole process of scanning and bringing it into a common shared platform. 
the other is that we got an opportunity at periodic intervals to make our studio project open to public so we would invite we would invite government officials we could invite and it became much easier uh, more because it was more affordable now than earlier times what did it do from the context of the student is that we encourage the student now to begin to become more conscious of their own environment so the manner in which a student would make a place in the home the manner in which a student would uh, combine uh, or go out all these started becoming the new what i would call the home laboratory design studio we called it the home laboratory design studio so that and this we encourage students from different parts to start communicating with one another and uh, we found strangely a new thing happened which we had not really uh, planned in the beginning but then got planned now is that the entire family has got involved in the studio and we've accepted it so the grandmother is talking stories of their culture we are documenting it and which otherwise would have been lost so we've opened up a completely new area of culture which otherwise gets lost in the university because it's so focused and isolated now we are able to bring in all the cultures and these become new programs and studio programs so that the students get time to videograph document the elders get stories of maybe pre world war time and and these are really uh, new revelations on embracing the digital you will see in the earlier one there is always a combination of the handmade and so we have a lot of online programs actually teaching faculty teaching students how to make models physical models this is a book which i would refer uh, new directions in sustainable design it doesn't really refer to the digital but it looks at various processes of design and uh, one of the practices is our own practice in india which has been documented of the 12 practices around the world and i'll come to that so if we look at it now we will see that the university can create a database and we have now created new courses for tactile and sensorial learning despite the digital and this combination we are open these courses are, we are trying to keep open source whoever is interested may write to us and we can log them on to our courses uh, for uh, actual sensorial uh, perception and growing that perception along with the digital so if we look at these seven aspects we have the design studio we'll see that now the design studio has shifted from a com combination of the manual and the digital it's a we are moving slowly into the hybrid studio mode and right now it's largely synchronous but students can post there's a group created and uh, various formats whatsapp kaizala various other formats where the groups and including email and so we've given them various um, kind of uh, drives that they can they can upload on at any time so what happens is sometimes the student is working at 11 in the night and feels like doing a drawing they post it if a faculty is awake uh, he can respond back but it's not necessary a faculty has to respond back but then this online and offline uh, remains now this virtual studio where they can communicate at any time we shifted the sites close to the student so we changed the, all the programs so the students could travel to their site they would video document it and send it back but we also did another thing is that we started mapping architects who are staying around the students homes in the different parts of india and now they have become our co collaborators to guide the student if there is a site visit so that's how we've dealt with the digital distance by inviting new collaborators in the different regions model making is done both ways you will see it's done both as digital and sensorial 3d printing we are teaching online 3d printing but the printers as of now remain in a central location uh it's not easy for each home to buy a printer and so we're really looking at how can we diversify the 3d printer hubs and theory theory is pretty much online but we've been we've been able to invite scholars from around the world 
and we've just begun 3D modeling and examining the new potential of what we call the home lab. You'll see some of the GIFs that the students create of the models they're making in their homes. And uh, I would say it, we are quite happy with the quality. And a lot of times the students have to have used packaging board and because it was a lockdown. So a lot of it is actually made from uh, packages of refrigerator or food packages. And, but it's still come, I think it has come to a certain degree of uh, clarity. I go back to the sensorial mode. This was an Arcasia workshop we held in uh, December in our school. And there were all the countries from Malaysia, Sri Lanka had come down uh, looking at the hands-on processes, oral communication face-to-face -face, and faculty also at times sketching. So we go back to these memories, not because we want to say that this is the only way of doing it, but I think these memories begin to awaken the sensorial. And many of these practices today, we are able to connect the students still to craftsmen so that in their own way, the students are attempting certain sensorial processes to get a touch of material. So if we look at this, uh, <clears throat> the framework of the new virtual studio, we have a knowledge resource, which becomes like the brain. It collects all the resources, the library, the knowledge, the workings of the studio also get uh, uploaded in a single drive. Then we have opening up of an intercultural and international collaborations. We have now connected with Curtin University and Cambridge, and we open, hope to open up with several other universities. We are connected with South America now, and we're reformulating the pedagogy. I think the earlier speakers spoke very well about it. I'm not going to repeat it. Transcend geographical boundaries, but importantly now, redefine what do we mean by this new learning community? and maybe evolve from that a network of studios around the world and a complex system of online, offline. We're still looking at the protocols of that, how it is measured, how do outcomes get measured. It cannot be too uh, random. And when new explorations of teams we're looking at and whether several universities can begin to collaborate on a single issue studio. The shift, the other shift is that from just the outcome now we're able to measure processes and go back to a certain process because this gets recorded real time all the time. So this is the shift that we are recording the process and recording the process means you don't have to have like earlier design studios, one final jury where a juror comes for 20 minutes or one hour and makes a comment and goes away. And that's the only feedback that a student gets. Now it can be more continuous and more harmonious also. Uh, the online protocols, one is discussion with community, which we believe is very important now in the pandemic to build resilience. They need to know their surroundings, map their surroundings. And so that builds in the resilience to begin to understand and communicate. And interactive programs have been created of various kinds so that students' health and inspiration is kept alive. There are moments when the whole uh, online studio can feel very low. There are moments when they're very high and we are recording these moments as well to ensure that our program meanders with it. So if there is a point where students are feeling very low, we, we really pause at that time, look at the issues and, and are able to deal with many other ways of sensorial reinforcement that uh, again inspires the studio. Then we have book readings, links to film and assignments. Another new initiative we've done is create products. So we're teaching students to create products so that they get a value of their own economic value. This is like a simulation, but I think uh, it doesn't become a one-on-one. -on -one. As a student-centric now, they want to make something. They want to understand the role of economy. So it could be various kinds of things, products, smaller products, lamps, lights, uh, company regulations, of course, uh, because some uh, architects work with somebody, uh, company. For the field projects, the intern can choose every project as long as supervised by architect and follow the regulations in that project. Um, the Department of uh, Public Works uh, already announced 
how uh, the sites or how uh, the procedure to works in the sites project. The regulation of safety and healthy in working area is obligatory, including the COVID-19 prevention uh, procedures. In some cases, a new trend as part of disruptions, this epidemic pushed some companies, including architecture company, for applying digital system. These conditions is an, an advantage for interns to do the internships because they can work from everywhere and supervised by, by any architects around Indonesia or moreover architects around the world, as long as they fulfill the requirement that is the architect must register and recognize in their architect association or architect board. The intern performance can be evaluated digitally as long as there, there are documentations and follow the logbook that can be downloaded via web or us for the security of EIA province. Uh, this is the table. Uh, this is how, uh, how the um, uh, internship works. As concluding, the new normal is a fact that we have to accept and follow. The architecture business will stagnate and some of them will review for the future advancement. It can be redesigned, continuous or stop totally. The internship program as part of architecture professional education that must do after graduate for, from five year architectural education, education is an obligatory for everybody who wants to be and work as an architect. It is important to remember that the internship program will provide a professional experience that cannot be done in the university, even with the Campus Merdeka program as an elective program for the third year students. Hope this condition is temporary and as social being, we just comprehended that meet people face to face physically is one of the privileged and the most precious ones. Thank you and God bless. That's all, Bu Mita. Okay, thank uh, the you. Sorry. Oh, no. uh, please end your share screen, Pak Dana. Okay. Okay. Uh, those are all the three presenters. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let, let me see if there's some questions from the audience. Mm, yeah, okay, there is a, a comment from uh, some of the audience uh, regarding the first year again. Yeah, I think this is an issue that we will face because uh, with the coming of the new semester, then we will receive the first year student and uh, we need to know what to do with the situation. Uh, maybe Pa Aswin can and uh, Prof. Bal Safar, can you share your idea about uh, what we should do with the first year student? Pass win first, maybe? Yeah, thank yeah, you, thank Prof. You. Prof. Mita. Uh, yeah, we, we will face the more challenging situation uh, because the first, uh, or in our case, is the second year student that uh, uh, entering uh, architecture studio the first, the first time. And we, we will have about 84 students uh, after, after they already finished their first common year. And uh, we plan to have uh, some adjustment uh, related with how we will uh, design the term of reference of the studio. Uh, the, in the previous year, our uh, second year studio is uh, envisioned to to broadening the 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 sense of the first year architecture student to introduce the uh, architectural elements and so on and to increase their uh, senses through uh, sketch and also uh, modeling but now we have to adjust uh, adjusting the the medium i mean the uh, because of the limitation travel limitation site survey limitation and also 
limitation of the group discussion that's the the, the very very challenging situation because uh, our uh, findings uh, one of the most important findings is uh, uh, from our pre preliminary assessment is the student feel uh, more engaged in the group discussion with the mentor because they can they can uh, uh, look for themselves from uh, other peers uh, increasing their uh, uh, semangat ya uh, apa namanya spirit uh, because if they work alone uh, it uh, discouraging their spirit uh, that's why uh, we 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 still looking uh, the, the the appropriate the affordable platform uh, for the student doing the group works uh, either uh, uh, through Uh, peer, uh, uh, I mean, pin up virtual pin up, or also using Zoom for uh, uh, group discussion. Uh, th that kind of that kind of uh, media that we are we are preparing to provide for the both uh, uh, group of student with one or two mentors, and also with the whole class because the 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 first years uh, the second year studio. We will have a panel class, uh, usually for the uh, introduction or also in, in instru instructional uh, uh, course led by the studio coordinator. And then uh, after the panel session, the studio divided into several uh, studio groups led by the uh, uh, mentors. And uh, we have to provide uh, the most uh, common or, or the most uh, friendly uh, user friendly platform in this case we use uh, zoom because uh, almost all students and all uh, lecturer already familiar with that that platform uh, another thing that we don't have yet the the solution is how to how to how to manage the uh, learning outcome Uh, without, without uh, face to face or without the the offline uh, interaction uh, normally occur in the studio, Prof Mita. That's that's uh, my my op opinion about the future or at least next semester studio for the first year of uh, architectural student. Thank you. Uh... Uh, next for Professor Baltafar, maybe please respond to the question about uh, do you have any idea what to do with the new students? And also another question about the ideal uh, ratio between student and tutor. What do you think in this situation? The ideal? The ideal? The ideal uh, ratio. Student tutor ratio. Ratio, ratio, okay. And also uh, the new student. Sure. So what? We've done, this is now again a very preliminary study, but we've uh, preliminary process for the last two months, but we've had uh, very good outcomes. Uh, it was not so difficult because with the first year, we were already there for about eight months before the lockdown. So this first year had already got into a certain process. It will definitely become more challenging, we know, in July when a completely new group comes and has not met with one another and then are in different parts uh, of the country. So that will be definitely more challenging. I can share with, it's a much longer document. I, I would like to share it with Aptari and with the Arkesha Education, what we've done. We've shared it with our own Indian Council of Architecture on what we have done because it gives a kind of broad framework of what are the issues. Now, if I have to just explain in a few words, we've created two or three new, two new courses which are only dealing with uh, sensorial appreciation. So it deals with sense of touch, it deals with sense of sound, it deals with, and these are very uh, specifically created spontaneous exercises with the students enjoy almost like a gaming and we've been connecting discussing this interdisciplinary beyond architects now we're talking with physiotherapists we're talking with anthropologists 
uh, neuroscience and psychologists uh, because they are giving us some amazing input on how these sensorial uh, tactile experiences can be grown and we've tried it now with the students and i think we've given them those exercises they're just loving it in fact they do so much work and send uh, i'd like to share it i will just share it maybe in a day or two to uh, aptari and arkesh you can really look at it because this needs to be shared across we we are just taking time to document and put it together uh, in a few days it will be there and we we want to do it open source everyone needs to see it because we are in a very uncertain strange time and i think as much as we can collaborate and help we should really collaborate and help this is a world issue that's one on student teacher ratio we have right now kept a 1 is to 10 ratio but what i have introduced in this process is that every senior faculty so i am a senior faculty now has a teaching assistant along with him all the time so what happens is that the teaching assistant actually starts getting into the documentation work because there's so much of documentation to be done and compiled and the senior faculty really pushes the interface the communication the conversation the programming at a 1 is to 10 ratio it also helps in building a younger faculty now who has just passed out it it is like a faculty development program for the younger faculty so we have combined now a faculty development program for younger faculty uh, one is to 10 ratio so technically it's one is to five since two faculty for 10 students but the younger faculty now uh, is not necessarily teaching but is coming in as a research assistant and is able to document and also able to share basic software skills revit sketchup uh, bim with the class Uh, so i think this is a combination and periodically once in a week or once in two weeks we are inviting very short sessions with practicing architects uh, so that and these are like evening sessions or half an hour one hour sessions so that the students start rethinking the projects given are they have to start looking at what will be the design for the new normal so public spaces in the new normal the home for the new normal i would even share those programs that we have evolved for the new normal uh, so it cannot be the normal auditorium or what we were doing conventionally the school we've stopped all that we're really looking at what will be this transformation of how do we occupy urban space now it's going to change how do we occupy uh, public transport how do we uh, what is our new forms of recreation and these are the questions that we are evolving uh, using film using various other media uh if you can i think in four or five days i will be able to share this all with you over the weekend we are going to put it together our semester's work and i would share it if if something is of use we would be happy and uh, one can open a dialogue but i think the sensorial dimension along with the digital was very important for us so they had to observe nature they had to bring a leaf from outside the home draw it The, with all these exercises i'll share it it's much more detailed but this was broadly how we dealt with it and i am a little hopeful that it should be possible i'm hopeful with the new batch the challenge is much more i agree but i am a little hopeful thank you yeah uh, thank you professor balasafar for your response <coughs> and also for your optimism that uh, it is possible to do to try to do all of or that thing. Uh the last question for this session uh and also for today is uh just a short question for Pak Dana. Uh where can we find the source for students to find information about internship in consultant office? Pak Dana, can you please briefly respond to this question? Uh the internship uh, can begin after uh they finish or graduate from the architectural education. Uh, five years architectural education, so um, it can be done after that, um, and then they they can call to the EIE province and then ask for the logbook and doing the internships. That's all. So uh, the student should contact the local uh, yes. province EIE office. Okay, thank you, Pak Dian. Depend on uh, where they want to work. Yeah. 
Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So yeah, we have already uh, extended time <laughs> from this review, <laughs> but I think this is a very important important uh, session for everyone. We we learn a lot from uh, all the speakers, and uh, we really hope that this. Uh, uh, presentation today and the uh, discussion will give some insight, useful insight for everybody to bring to uh, your own institution and start thinking about uh, what kind of transformation that you would like to uh, prepare. Uh, I would like to share just a brief conclusion about our discussion today, just for just as a short notes uh, for everyone. Uh, can you share my screen? Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Okay. Uh, so this is just a summary from my notes from all the presenters. Uh, uh, we are talking here about the finding new direction for architectural education in the new normal period. Uh, I would like to summarize that actually uh, there are four main aspects of transformation. Uh, this is based on my notes, so probably there might be some additional aspects. Uh, the first is about learning platform or learning media. I think we have already discussed lots of this uh, in the last three months, and uh, but then actually uh, the the problem with the virtual learning and the uh, distance learning is not only about the platform or the media because that's actually very technical. Uh, I think we need to move forward and, and start thinking about the other three aspects that have been discussed by all the presenters today uh, about how can we update the curriculum contents like uh, talking about issue base, uh, finding about uh, utilizing digital data or uh, shifting the topic like uh, the idea of urban space after the pandemic, the role of home and so on that have been discussed by the presenter. And then what is also important is about the pedagogy or the student's experience. This should also be our consideration. Uh, and then the last but not least is the healthy and safety protocols. This is also very technical, but I think this is a requirement that uh, we all need to act upon. Uh, and what is also important is that uh, we need to think of those aspects while ensuring the learning out outcome uh, that's stated in our education. Uh, and then this, this is just a short notes, uh, just uh, to invite all the audience to think that uh, the challenges that is posed by the new normal, uh, maybe it should not be seen as a restriction or something that is uh, difficult. Uh, I actually shared the optimism uh, by Professor Balsafar just now. So we need to see that the challenges uh, in this current situation should be considered as a trigger for innovation, as a trigger for change. And it is also become the medium for us to find the balance between virtual and the real world. And last but not least, as a new window for further sharing and collaboration, either between disciplines or between institutions or even uh, internationally. So uh, with this, I would like to uh, to bring the spirit to everybody for, for all the audience. Let's be prepared for the new normal. We have lots of homework that we need to think, we need to do. And I hope that this information session is useful for everyone. Uh, I would like to give back to the host, Thank Chris Idimenda. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Paramita. Uh, on behalf of Aptari, I would like to extend our uh, highest appreciation to all the presenters and Professor Paramita is the chair of the sessions, the panel discussions. Um, thank you for thank you to senior lecturer Dr. Zairul, Associate Professor Dr. Rufina Tilakaratne, Associate Assistant Professor Dr. Uh, Coach Coach Wei and uh, Associate Professor Dr. Aswin Indraprasta, Professor Durganan Belsavar, Architect Suwardana Winata. And uh, also, I would like to thank all the chair, the committee chair from Indonesian Institute of Architects, uh, Architect Ketutrana Wiyarka, Mr. Ariko Anda, Andikabina, Architect Ahmad Saifuddin Mutaki. And also, last but not least, how was the appreciation for the amazing collaboration to the chair and the deputy chair of Committee of Architecture Education, ACAE, architect Gyanendra Singh Shekawat and architect Adrianta Aziz. 
um, before we end uh, the, the session, I would like to thank all the participants from all over Indonesia for participating in this symposium. And I would like to re kindly remind you that um, next week we are going to conduct another web conference. Um, it will be uh, in Bahasa Indonesia uh, about the response of uh, higher education architecture higher education in Indonesia to the new Campus Merdeka curriculum um, to be to be held on Saturday 27th of June from nine o'clock Jakarta time. Thank you once again for uh, uh, for coming to this uh, symposium and um, uh, see, you, see you again in another event. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you to all. Bye. Salamu alaikum. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for all.